to FWC Online. We are so glad to have you with us today, and we are very much looking forward to exploring God's Word together, and I hope that you are too. We would love to know that you're with us today, so if you do us a favor and let us know down in the comment section how you're doing today, something that went really well this week, or maybe even something you're looking forward to next week. And if today is your very first time with us, we would love to connect with you after today. All you have to do to help us make that happen is text the keyword CONNECT to 816-800-9937. You'll receive a reply message with a link to our digital connection card. Just tap on that link, complete that connection card, and we'll be in touch. And once again, thank you so much for being with us today. We really look forward to getting to know you better. In just a moment, we're going to be worshiping together in song. But before we do that, worship is so much more than just singing. It's a lifestyle, Scripture says, and it includes every area of our lives. Giving and how we use our finances is one of the most significant ways that we worship because our giving reveals where our heart is at and our heart is what God wants more than anything else. So as you consider your gift today, we want to first say thank you so much for your generosity and for being obedient to the Lord in giving your tithes and offerings. As a giver-supported church, we do not take your giving for granted. It is a blessing when we say thank you. For your convenience, you can give online through our website, fwcsmithville.com. You can give through the FWC app by tapping the Give link or even via mail. The simplest way, however, is to simply text the keyword GIVE to 816-800-9937 and you'll receive a reply message with a link to our secure online giving platform. Again, we want you to know your investment in God's kingdom makes a significant difference and we say thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And now we invite you to join us in a song of worship today.
Center. Here are this week's announcements. If you missed last week, you missed out on some great chili. Oh yeah, you did. Mm -hmm. And some exciting reports of what God did through FWC in 2021 and where he is leading us moving forward. But that does not mean you can't get a glimpse of it still. We still have some information packets from the meeting that are still available and we would love to get one in your hands if you're interested. All you got to do is reach out to us some way, somehow, and let us know you want one, and we will be happy to mail it out this week. By the way, if you are a member of the church and you missed the meeting, we already got you covered. Yours is already in the mail. By the way, the chili cook-off was rigged. I won. Lindsay, you rocked it. <laughs> Small groups are continuing this week, and uh, they're going very strong. Yep. We want to remind you that if you signed up for a group, be sure and try and be there each week. And here's why. Because as you attend and as you participate faithfully, it has this cumulative effect of growth in your life. It's all about the really small incremental steps of growth that add up to become the life change that we each want and need. So don't miss your group this week. Tonight is the Hebrews Virtual Group at 5 p.m. Tuesday at 6.30 is the in-person group study. It's not supposed to be this way with Lisa Turkers. And Wednesday at 6 p.m. is the kids' small group studying worship. Yep, small groups are awesome. Don't miss them. Yeah. How many of you out there enjoy a good cup of coffee? I know I do. Can I see a hand? Can I get a witness? Right. How many of you pay an arm and a leg every now and again to get coffee from one of those famous fancy coffee places? Why not put your coffee habit to good use by using Giving Bean? Giving Bean has partnered with our student ministry to send a portion of your purchase to our students. All you have to do is use a specific link, make your purchase, and enjoy your coffee. Nothing better. They will handle the rest. If you go to bit.ly slash epic coffee, all in lowercase, you will find the numerous and high quality products that they offer. And here's the best part. When you purchase using that link, you are helping support the Dennis and Julie Brown Scholarship Fund. If you go to bit.ly slash epic coffee, you will find the numerous and high quality products that they offer. And here is the best part. When you purchase, you are helping support. <laughs> if you go to bit.ly slash epic coffee, all in lowercase, you will find the numerous and high quality products that they offer. And here is the best part. 
When you purchase, you're helping support the Dennis and Julie Brown Scholarship Fund, which is helping to send students to camps and mission trips and so much more. So do us a favor, check out Giving Bean at bit.ly slash Epic Coffee. I finally got it! <laughs> Your turn. Speaking of students, if you want a student, don't miss out on our Nerf night, Friday, February 18th. We're going to have an epic Nerf gun war battle here at church, and it's happening from 6 to 10. There's going to be Nerf battles. There's going to be a movie for those who need a break from the Nerf battles. There's going to be pizza to fuel the fun, and it's only going to cost you 10 bucks to participate. So bring your Nerf guns and get ready to eat some foam darts. Hey, congratulations, I did take you three times. Right. Finally, we want to encourage you to check out FWC app, where we have found details about these, where you can find details about these announcements, foam and foam. spiritual growth tools, message notes, online giving, foam and, foam. and missionary updates. Oh, we got through it. We told you about how many missionaries we support at the annual business meeting last week, I'm but did person. you know that many of them send us updates on what God is doing as the minister. <laughs> we post their newsletters on the app so you can see how your giving is making an impact and so that you can pray for these missionaries as well. So check them out. You, you can download the app by texting the keyword APP to 816-800-9937 and tapping the link in the message, in the reply message. APP. Those are the announcements this week, everybody. We finally got through them. And now, let's get back into our new series in the book of Ephesians. Thanks for bearing with us today. Welcome back to week number two in our new series that we're entitling Ephesians. You're a Christian. Now what? And uh, as we're going to discover, Ephesians is a handbook for the Christian life, which is why we're calling it that. Defining for us who we are in Christ and what impact that identity has on our lives. Today, we're going to explore a single verse. But despite that really small verse, we're still going to cover a lot of ground because it's in the first couple of verses of the book of Ephesians where all of the themes that are covered later in the book are introduced. So Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 3, and as you find it, uh, as you're turning there, uh, something really interesting to note about the section that we're entering today, we're going to be in over the next couple of weeks. Um, verse number 3 through verse number 14, they form the single longest sentence ever found in the ancient Greek literature. 202 words without a single comma, period, or even a semicolon. This is an English teacher's worst nightmare. My comp and rep, college comp and rep professor would have just lost it. In fact, it's deadly because, uh, for example, lives can depend on punctuation. There's a really big difference between let's eat grandma and let's eat comma grandma. One is this threatening flashback to the Donner Party. <laughs> the other is a, a much more compelling invitation to nourishment. But in the Greek, there isn't a single punctuation mark in this entire section. And you know why? Let me ask it this way. Have you ever been so excited and so caught up in explaining something that you just keep talking? You're just going from one thought to the next and to the next. And there's like hardly even a breath in between them. That's exactly where Paul is at when he writes this. But this passage is so long and complicated because it's a song of praise. Paul is so caught up in who God is and what God has done for us that he can't seem to stop talking about it. This is spontaneous worship of God written down. I imagine the scribe having a real hard time keeping up with him. Like, hold on, could you repeat that? And we're going to dive into some really sophisticated and some even some complex subjects today and throughout Ephesians. So I want you to put your theology thinking caps on and to help us all understand these subjects and to kind of catch the various nuanced themes that are introduced here, we're going to break it into a little bit more manageable chunks, but I still want us to appreciate it as this single string of unbroken worship and praise to God, okay? The first chunk is a single verse, and it's verse number three. 
All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Let's break this down a little bit. Paul's pattern in his letters is to open with a greeting, and then he begins to share with the church what he's praying for them when he thinks of them. This time, however, in Ephesians, he opens with a greeting, and then this worship just like explodes out of him. It's spontaneous. It just happens. And it's important because it immediately directs our focus to where it belongs. Where's that? God. Well, Pastor, that seems kind of anticlimactic when you say it that way. Well, of course it does. Our focus belongs on God, though. But but here's the thing. We've missed the magnitude of what Paul is saying, and we're only four words in. He says in verse number three, four words in, all praise to God. Well, who is this God? And why does this God deserve our attention and deserve our worship? Well, the answer, as Paul gives it, is that the true God who deserves and should receive our worship is the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King, the Messiah. God, as Paul is talking about him, is not the same as the God's little g of the pagan world. God isn't just a divine force. God is not a vague influence or energy. He is the God who spoke the universe into existence. The God who measures that universe with the span of his hand. And the God who has now revealed himself in Jesus. That is on whom our attention belongs. All praise to God. Now, as far as Paul is concerned, and as far as the Bible is concerned for that matter, any picture of God that doesn't have Jesus in the middle of it and at the center of it is a distortion or, in fact, a complete fabrication This entire section, all 11 verses of it, is filled with the story of what God has done in Jesus the Messiah. So what is that? What has God done through Jesus the Messiah? Well, it all begins with spiritual blessings. Every spiritual blessing, in fact. You need to understand what I'm about to say because it will influence and shape absolutely everything about how you see God. God's will is to bless you. Now, many believers struggle to believe that, so no wonder those who don't know Jesus tend to see God as the cosmic popo, right? Too many Christians misunderstand God the Father and Jesus. We, we, too many think of the two as two separate and vastly different expressions of God. Now, I don't want to wade too deeply into the weeds here, uh, but we really need to grasp the reality that Jesus is God and the Father is God, And that as Jesus said, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Meaning that God, the Father, is just like Jesus and vice versa. If you've seen one, then you've seen them both. So if you know me at all, you know that I like dad jokes. Uh, I love to tell dad jokes. I love the groans that I get from dad telling dad jokes. But uh, I heard a a joke one time about a a father who has uh, two twin, identical twin boys. One that they named Amal and one that they named Juan. And um, this is in the days before we had cell phones that had pictures of all the things and all the random things that we take pictures of, but had pictures of our family on them. And you would actually carry in your wallet pictures of your family if you wanted to. And uh, so this dad, being a good dad, has a picture of his wife and a picture of his daughter and a picture of their pets, and uh, but only has one picture of his twin boys, just just one of them. And uh, it was weird. And so one of his coworkers was looking at it and said, "Well, why, why do you only have one picture of of one of your boys?" And he says, "Well, if you've seen, you know, Juan, that's Juan that you're looking at. If you've seen Juan, you've seen them all, right?" So, like, they're identical twins. Do you get it? You've seen Juan. You've seen them all. Okay, so that's the dad joke for the day. You can type in the comment section, boo, or groan, or laugh, or whatever, because that's a good dad joke. Anyway, if you've seen the Father, back to our topic of in Ephesians, if you've seen the Father, then you've seen the Son. And if you've seen the Son, then you've seen the Father. Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God. And together, the Father and the Son, along with the Holy Spirit, are the source of all of the abundant spiritual blessings that Paul mentions here. The every spiritual blessing. They are the source. God is the source. But the mistake is to see the Father, God the Father, as the cruel overseer and that's disinterested in you. He's only concerned with you when you screw up. 
Because that makes Jesus like the parent that swoops in to deflect the irrational anger of this overreacting, the other overreacting parent. And if that's the case, God has a split personality disorder. The father is bad cop, Jesus is good cop. And that's how a lot of Christians see him, but that's not it. A better understanding is to see God as the judge who throws the book at the guilty offender and then in Jesus comes out from behind the bench and absorbs the full punishment for the offense. God's will is to bless you, and He does so with every spiritual blessing in Christ. But what are these blessings? What are we talking about? Because when we typically think of blessings, I don't know about you, but we typically think of money, possessions, and prestige, right? Well, of course we do. And to be honest, there are times when that is a way that God chooses to bless, but that's not the way that God always chooses to bless. The blessings being highlighted here and the blessings that God is being praised for here, they're not material blessings. He says they're spiritual ones. And then in the next few verses, we'll see that these spiritual blessings include things like election by God, adoption as His son and daughters, redemption, forgiveness, the gift of God's Spirit, and the hope of glory. It's the, a virtual wish list of the best and most valuable blessings imaginable. But where are these blessings? Like, I mean, how do we get them? Do we go to the store? Paul is telling us they're, quote, in the heavenly realms. Remember, let's read it again. Verse number three. All praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. Uh, How do I get there? Is there a GPS map to that? Are there coordinates I should follow? This is not talking about a planet or a nebula somewhere out in the cosmos, but rather is pointing us to the spiritual sphere of our existence. Hear me. You are not just a physical body. You have a spirit. And something that, that, that spirit is something that's not corporeal, that responds to and interacts with things that are also not corporeal, We have a very real spiritual existence, and it's one that most often we're ignorant of, but is nonetheless real. And it's in that spiritual reality that every spiritual blessing has been given to us. But it's also in that spiritual reality that we're going to discover later in this letter that at present, the heavenly realms are the location of our greatest battles. Satan, as the prince of the power of the air, as Scripture describes him, is given great power to wage battle against humanity. And it begins in the heavenly or spiritual realms. And our enemy is aided in his battle by other spiritual beings who are under his control and direction, and they operate also in the spiritual realms. And Paul's going to give us great instruction later on in chapter number 6 on how we are to arm ourselves to win these battles. But that's not today's focus. But I promise we will get there eventually. So it's in these heavenly realms where every spiritual blessing has been given to us, right? But notice how these blessings are accessible to us. Since heavenly realms aren't places you can physically go to, but that's where every spiritual blessing has been given to us, how in the world does somebody gain access to every spiritual blessing? Well, to answer that, I want to read this exact same verse from the New American Standard Version, which is a word-for-word translation of the original Greek. And let's see if you can spot the answer, okay? So Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 in the NASB says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Did you see it? In Christ. Now, in Jewish thought, A king represented his people, so that whatever happened to him would also happen to them. And what's true of him is also true of them. Think of David fighting Goliath. He represented Israel, and whatever happened to him would be would be what would happen to the people too. That was the deal. So it is with us. Jesus has won the decisive victory over the oldest and darkest enemy of all. And if we are in him, in the king, in Christ then every spiritual blessing is ours. If we are in Christ, we will be enabled to walk more and more in the victory that He has already won for us. In other words, we will experience every spiritual blessing as we are in Christ. There is no more intimate and close connection than that. 
Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to think of Ephesians as the New Testament counterpart of the Old Testament book of Joshua. Okay, and here's what I mean. Israel's blessings were found in the Promised Land, or Canaan. Ours are found in the heavenly realm. The Israelites had to battle lots of enemies in Canaan to possess all that God had promised them. We have to battle Satan and his armies to enter into all that is ours in Christ. Israel's inheritance in Canaan was fiercely contested. Our inheritance in the heavenlies is also fiercely contested. And just as Joshua led God's chosen people into victory, so Jesus leads us into victory. The Israelites only had to trust and obey God in order to enter into those blessings that he had for them. The Canaanites, despite their formidable appearance, despite their massive armies, they were already defeated. God said that. But the Israelites did not believe God's promises. If you go back and you reread the book of uh, Joshua, you, or you go back and reread uh, Deuteronomy and you reread the law and see where the people are going to enter into the promised land and they decide, no, we can't do this. Right? They disobeyed God out of their unbelief and as a result, they forfeited the blessings that God had for them. They spent 40 years in the wilderness as a result of their refusal to trust God. All the Israelites had to do was trust God, enter the land, and take hold of what was rightfully theirs because of what God had already done for them. All that Israel had to do was to go forward in faith and in obedience, and the same is true of you. There are way too many Christians that do not realize that there can be no blessings without battles. Yes, the heavenly realm is occupied by our enemy, but our enemy is a defeated enemy. Christ has already won our victory. Our enemy is a defeated enemy. Christ leads us into possession of all that God has promised to us in Him. Every spiritual benefit has already been made available. The appropriation of those blessings, that's what we're learning to do as we follow and trust in Jesus. As we walk in faith, taking Him at His word and obeying the instructions that He gives to us, we more and more begin to experience every spiritual blessing. Why? Because we take ownership of them through faith in Him. God told Joshua that every place that he would put his foot in the promised land, that it was already given to him. That's what God said to Joshua. Despite that fact... It wasn't a reality until Joshua stepped his foot on, in faith and obedience to God's word in the promised land. If Joshua had just decided to hang back at base camp, he would have forfeited the land that God had already given to him. It, honestly, it was unnecessary for Joshua to go and say, God, I want you to give me this land. I want you to give me this land, Lord. I need this land. Why? Because it had already been given to him. He was told, put your foot on it by faith. And the same goes for you. It's unnecessary for believers to pray for spiritual blessings that have already been given, already been provided for us. We've been told to live in it by faith. And way too many of us struggle at that. We struggle to live in it. And the reason that believers don't receive spiritual benefits is not because God is stingy. It's not because we haven't prayed for them. It's because we're not appropriating by faith what God has already given to us. Every spiritual blessing, every spiritual benefit is at our disposal for our spiritual well-being. What are some of those benefits? We'll talk more about them, but here's a handful. Justification before God. The removal of all condemnation for our sin. Complete freedom from our old life, our old sin nature. Liberty from the crushing weight of the law. Total acceptance from God. New creation status. We are holy. We're made blameless. We're objects of God's love. We're adopted, forgiven. We're masterpieces of God's workmanship. And we could go on and on and on. All of these are already ours because of Jesus and only in Jesus. We cannot and will not experience any of them outside of a relationship with Him, which is exactly where we have to begin. If you're not a follower of Jesus, I want to talk to you for just a second. Only in Christ can you gain the thing that you need most. What is that? It's not more money. It's not a better job. It's not that relationship that you want so desperately. It's forgiveness and cleansing from sin. Well, why is that what I need most, Nick? 
Well, it's because everyone stands guilty before God for sin. And the penalty, no matter how big or small that sin might be, is death. God, being just, being a God of justice, cannot overlook sin, which is why He stood in our place in Christ. And He paid the full penalty that we earned. And now every spiritual blessing is ours in Christ. You have to choose to accept what He did for you in order for it to count, His sacrifice to count for your sin. Hear me on this. God is not being cruel or stingy. God is not standing in the way saying, no, you can't be forgiven. He is saying there is one way to be forgiven, and that is by coming to Jesus. And in that process, what we're doing is we're saying, I am wrong. God, you are right. I have sinned, and I need forgiveness because I can't pay the penalty for the sin that I've done. I can't pay the price that is on my head for the sins that I've committed. The only way that that can be covered is through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I can't earn it, I can't deserve it. All I can do is accept it. And so God, I'm coming to you and I'm saying, Lord, would you forgive me? I surrender my life to your Lordship and I ask that you would lead me, help me to walk and follow you in the appropriate ways. And if that's a decision that you need to make today, I think you know who you are. I think the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you, whether you realize it or not. And God is calling to you saying, you need that. That's your greatest need is forgiveness. And if today you would say, Pastor, I'm ready to make that decision. I'm ready to receive by faith what Jesus has done for me, that very first and greatest of all spiritual blessings. I'm ready to receive by faith his forgiveness for my sin. If that's you today and you would say that for the very first time, I want you to follow the instructions that are on the screen right now. I'm giving you instructions to text that keyword to the number there on the screen. Please do that. And here's why. It's going to lead you to a, um, an online card, uh, an information form that uh, we would ask you just to fill out some basic information, nothing real complex. We're not gonna, um, that, we're not gonna sell that info to anybody. It's gonna be safe and secure. We're not gonna share that info. Basically what that is, is it's you taking a step of faith, number one, but it also tells us, hey, somebody took a step of faith and now we get to come alongside you and partner with you in this journey of faith that you're beginning today. If that's you today, I want you to let us know, Pastor, I'm taking that step. I wanna be right with Jesus and today's the day. So let us know that you're taking that step today. I want to talk to all those of you who are followers of Christ. You have been given every spiritual blessing in Christ. If it's a spiritual blessing, then God intends for you, yes, you, to experience it. He provided it. Will you choose to receive it by faith? Notice, I didn't say by effort of yours. By faith. Simple belief that if it's a spiritual blessing then God provided it for me and God wants me to experience it and God wants me to live in it and I want me to live in it too. Simple trust to step out and either receive it or walk according to it, whatever the case might be. Way too many of us are living like we are second class children of God, as if we believe that God doesn't intend for us to experience this blessing or that blessing. That's, that's not for me, as if we're somehow restricted to only certain spiritual blessings. Hear me, Christian, wake up. If it's a spiritual blessing that it is yours in Christ, let me ask you, what spiritual blessing have you been missing out on? What spiritual blessings have you only dreamed of having but never imagined could be yours? I want to read again Ephesians 1 verse 3 in the NASB. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Notice it's past tense. He's already done it. It is now time to accept and walk in all the spiritual blessings that Christ has provided for you. But it's still a decision you have to choose. Is there a, a spiritual blessing that you've been, man, God, I wish that I felt cleansed, or I wish that I, you know, I would uh, experience the power of your Holy Spirit to empower my life to be a witness to others, or God, I wish that you would bless me with the ability to walk in obedience. He has. It's a matter of whether or not you have chosen to accept it, to receive it by faith. He's already provided it. It's sitting right in front of you. All you have to do is reach out and accept it. Maybe today that's you. 
It's where you're at and you're struggling. You're saying, Pastor, there, this is where this is what I have been wanting and longing for for so long, but I just haven't been, been able to walk in it. I haven't been able to live in it, and I want to. God has said it's true of me. I choose to believe that it's true of me, and now I choose to walk as if it's true of me, to live as if it's true of me. Today, as we pray, I want you to pray as well and say, Lord, I choose to accept by faith what you've done, everything that you've done for me. And if it's a spiritual blessing, then that means you want me to have it, and that means I want me to have it. So God, I'm open. Lord, I thank you for what your word has revealed to us today about your goodness to us, what you've done for us, how much love you've demonstrated to us, God. You are so good. And Lord, we come to you today and we ask, God, that you would help us to walk in, to not only believe in our minds, yes, that's part of it, we need to believe in our spirit that yes, you have provided every spiritual blessing. God, now we're gonna struggle with, but do I really want every spiritual blessing? Or we'll struggle with, but am I gonna be able to walk in the spiritual blessings that you've given to me? God, I pray that you would help us to not walk as second-class citizens of the kingdom of God but that you would help us to walk as sons and daughters of the King, sons and daughters of the Most High God, that you have granted to us that which you have appropriated by your life, death, and resurrection, Jesus, that we would take ownership of that and in Christ. Because we are in you, we are forgiven, we are cleansed, we are empowered, God. We are given every spiritual blessing because we are in Christ. So, Lord, I ask that you would help us today. Help us this week. Help us the rest of our lives, God, to walk in that, to believe it in our spirit, and to live it out in everyday life. And that, God, for those areas that we might be lacking or struggling to believe, God, would you fill us with faith to believe what your word has just revealed to us today. God, for those that are choosing to accept you for the very first time, Lord, I pray that you would help them. Lord, as they are made, have they have made that decision, their sin is forgiven, they are cleansed, they are holy, they are new in Christ, they are spotless and blameless in your eyes right now by the simple act of faith saying, I choose to believe. God, they are, they are. They are a follower of Jesus, they are a son or daughter of God, and there's nothing the enemy can do about it. Lord, I pray that you would now help them to walk according to that new identity. Help them to live that out, God, and help us as a church to come alongside them as they let us know that they're making that decision. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you so much for being with us today. I want to encourage you to come back to next week as we pick up here in the book of Ephesians with uh, chapter number one, verse number four. I think we're going through verse six next week, but we'd love to see you back next week. Join us again. Until then, I want to leave you with a blessing from Numbers chapter six where it says, may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace in Jesus' name. Have an incredible week this week, guys. Thanks so much for being with us.